Hey everyone, I have a Kickstarter going on right now. Bones and I do. It is for the Magpie, our horror, lesbian, Lovecraftian comic. We are kickstarting for volume 1 and 2. Um, we already have volume 1 out, but we're doing like a reprint. And um, yeah, there's lots of cool merch. You can get a signed book if you're interested. There is a link in the description down below. Also, I will be at Anime North at the end of May, so if you're going, please come say hi. I'll be in the Pro Plaza. So yeah, enjoy the video. Is art style intentional? Sort of. Um, I've done a video about tailoring your style to suit the project you're working on. So in short, to summarize that, you can choose elements that fit the style of your project, from color choices to how you treat shapes and lines. But a major part of style comes naturally from your interests and from, you know, just what sticks as you learn to draw. I think the problem comes when you rely totally on your natural style. You'll tend to run into a whole bunch of mistakes, and especially mistakes that you don't even see until like years later when you're looking back on your work. Because, I mean, that's been my experience with my work. <laughs> so like, say looking at The Magpie, which is a comic that I've been working on for a few years now. Maybe two? I don't remember. Anyways, there are a bunch of things in the magpie that are intentional. So like, I like to draw big eyes and big expressions. I like fluid lines and hair and limbs with lots of motion. Stark black and white and stylized anatomy and simplified shadows. Like, that's all stuff that I really thought about and chose when I went into drawing the magpie. But there are tons of things that I can see now, looking back at old pages, that were not intentional at all. <laughs> For example, long faces, sketchy line work, wonky anatomy mistakes, weird cross-hatching all over the place. And like, I'm sure there's a ton of things that I'm not even seeing right now. But yeah, none of it, I, I didn't mean to do any of that. But I remember my art teacher used to look at my drawings and she'd say, Oh, that looks very Ursula, uh, because they were really loose and sketchy and messy. Um, and it was, it was really frustrating because I didn't want them to look very Ursula. You know, I wanted really like tight lines and like cleaner work. Because it's very easy to have your unintentional qualities of your work become what you're recognized for, which I find very frustrating. Because it's like, I don't want to always look sketchy and loose, wonky and weird. Like that's not what I'm intending. It's what's happening by mistake. So yeah, I find that super frustrating. But at the same time, I don't know if there's anything I can do except for looking out for things I don't like and trying to correct them slowly through time and practice. And honestly, thinking about it really hard, I don't think style matters much as long as your style supports your intention. My example with my art teacher, having the loose sketchy lines was not my intention. The style I used was conflicting with the intention of the piece. So that's a problem. Because you don't want your style to contradict what you're trying to communicate, whether it's content-wise or even style-wise. So, you know, if you're making a really cute comic that's, like, supposed to be super adorable, but something in your style is making it look weird and not cute, like, that's a problem. You know, I'm doing a horror comic. If I have stuff that makes it not look scary, that's a problem. So yeah, I guess, personally, I just need to look out for when Stuff like that is happening when my style and my intentions don't match up and work to correct that. I also find it really interesting to look at other artists' work, um, from like new artists to artists I really admire, and wonder like, what about this is intentional? What about this are they not even seeing? And is it like what they're known for as an artist? Are they just falling on it accidentally? Like, I, I guess I'll never know unless I like talk to them, but yeah, I'm always curious. I think that's the most frustrating part about style is that half the time you don't even see what your style is. Because um, half the time I'll talk about the way I draw something and Bones will go like, oh no, you're, you know, you, you always draw it this way. For example, like I was trying to draw like a panel from Magpie recently and I was really struggling with it. And I was like, there's something weird about the anatomy here. Like her head is too big and the girl beside her, like, her her body's too big or something and Bones comes up and he's like oh you know you always kind of draw the head like a little bit too big like that's kind of your your style and I was like oh I mean I guess I've been doing that but that's not what I meant to do so yeah <laughs> I'm always learning stuff that I'm not seeing and it's it's frustrating and interesting 
I think it's like a breakthrough moment when I realize that I'm doing something I wasn't intending. Because as soon as you know about it, you start to see it and you can start to like fix it if you want to. So I guess that brings me into how do I get past my like blindness to my own style? Like I said, I think the most important thing you can do is get feedback. So whether it's like a critique partner or a group um, or a friend, like it's just great when someone who's not attached to your work can point out where there's an issue. Even sit down and ask people like, what do you think my style is? Like what characteristics define my style? Um, you might be surprised about what they say. Um, or they could reaffirm stuff that you're doing intentionally, which is great because it means you're on the right track. So yeah, so as soon as you can identify the flaws and unintentional things, you can start to work on them. Um, so for me, the unintentional stuff I do is like messy line work, for example. Um, that's something I really want to avoid. I want to really tighten up my lines. Um, I want to keep like the fluidity in motion because I know that's something that comes with the really loose sketchy stuff I do. But I want to be able to keep that while making like really firm, clean lines um, and like tight shapes. So knowing that, I can really dig down and work hard on firming up my lines, making sure they're clean, um, instead of just throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. I can actually focus my, my efforts. And finally, I guess just question everything you're doing, um, especially when you're, say, in the early development stages of, you know, a comic or a project. Um, really think about, like, why am I doing the lines this way? Can I try them a different way and still, like, achieve what I want? You know, why am I choosing these colors versus these colors? Or these shapes versus these shapes, you know? Really just think about what you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, I think to a certain extent with a project, it is okay to say, like, I'm doing this because I like it or I'm doing this because it's easy. Um, especially in comics where you're going to be working on them for a long time. So I think it's okay to take, like shortcuts here and there to make things easier and more fun for yourself. But really think about like, am I doing this because it suits the content I'm working on? Or am I doing this because I don't want to learn the way I actually want to do things? Because it's one thing to like, I don't, you shouldn't feel bad if you're like doing something because it's easier. Because it's your project, you can do it however you want. I guess like, if you're intending it to look some way, but you don't let yourself make it look that way because you're afraid, of it being hard, like, don't let that get in your way. Don't be afraid to try something new and, like, force yourself to make it look even cooler than it already does, you know? Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> um, basically, push yourself, but you don't have to push yourself on every single little thing all the time, because you'll burn out and be tired and sad, so. And yeah, and don't worry about your personal flair slipping in, like, your natural style, because it's going to happen, like, no matter where you are, in your study or in your art journey or in your comic, your personal touch is gonna be there. You know, two people can draw the same thing in the same style and it's still gonna feel different because you come with different inspirations, you come with different experiences um, and different knowledge. So it's gonna be, whatever you make is gonna be you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, and embrace that and be cool with it. And But keep in mind all the stuff I said about ensuring that your intention is coming through, push yourself to improve things that you want to improve, but in the end, have fun and don't really worry about it. It's art. It's pretty low stakes. I hope that helps. It's been a while since I recorded because Bones and I just got back from TCAF and oh my god, I'm so tired. But yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, please consider supporting our Kickstarter that's going on until June 10th or 11th, early June. <laughs> so yeah. I will see you guys next time. Um, if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the video, or if you want to see more cool content about making comics and writing comics and all things good, good, good webcomic. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Goodbye!